Hunt with passion. Never stop casting. Chase the dream. Welcome to Season 3 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Sponsored by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to yet another vlog segment here on the Musky Master YouTube channel. It is season three. I believe this is actually our traditional vlog number 11. I did some vlogs during the actual uh, peak guiding season, tried to keep some content flowing this season each week. That was my goal. We got close. I think I missed one week, but hey, who's really counting? Maybe you guys are, but I tried to hit at least one uh, vlog or musky segment per week this year. This, uh, we're actually eclipsing 52 segments. And I want to first maybe start by just saying, hey, thanks. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to the subscribers. Thanks to my sponsors, Joe Booker Outdoors, St. Croix Rods, uh, you know, all the viewers out there. You guys are the best. The comments, the support, the constructive criticism. Hey, uh, you, you guys You guys have just uh, been, been amazing. So, hey, this is the first uh, first season we have we have reached over 52 musky content episodes. I guess I got a few bass ones in there, but hey, we got a lot of cool stuff coming in season four. But let's talk about this vlog. And guys, as you can see, uh, the whiteboard is back. Woo! Yeah, Mark Ebner. There you go. A little shout out for Mark Ebner. Uh, always always gonna love when Mark gives you a woo and. Uh, but this, this shout out here is to someone uh, very special, John Seegers. John, I cannot thank you enough for this amazing gift to the Musky Mastery channel. John, this is incredible. Guys, John Seegers, actually I'm dropping my amazing magnets. John Seegers is an architect by trade and he is also a musky magnet architect. Look at these things, this is incredible. Uh, how about this? We got top down musky magnets, we got, uh, you know, rightward facing and leftward facing muskies here. Let's see if I can pick up this other top down musky bag. Guys, we can now really flesh out a lot of the educational topics that we want here on the channel. So that is just incredible. John Seegers, thank you so much. And again, thank you to everybody who has supported Musky Mastery. Um, got a lot of really great stuff coming in season four and still, of course, in season three. And I'll have, a, I'll have an update vlog as we get going here. But I want to talk to you now. This is a really important vlog here today, guys. This is really important because we are now approaching and kind of in this most anticipated time of the year. But this time of year is also very much misunderstood. So it's a two-way road there. It's, it's very anticipated, but a lot of folks that I run into, and I'll just say that, because I, I know this because of, of guiding, guide clients, there's a lot of folks that don't understand the transition. So the name of this vlog, or if you want to call it a podcast, you can call it a podcast or a vlog, whatever you want to call it. The name of this production here today is called The Fall Transition and Musky Movement. So today we're talking about my findings. These are uh, I would say somewhat scientific findings, but really more so, uh, you know, time on the water has shown me and I've been able to uh, reveal to myself a couple clues of the musky movement throughout the season. And today we're focusing on a couple key times, okay? We're going to focus on and we're going to, we're going to, you know, add and include water temperatures in these key times, okay? We're going to talk about, you know, the late summer period which we're kind of coming out of right now in the northern Wisconsin uh, area where I fish, Vialis United Forest Counties. So we're gonna talk midsummer. we're gonna talk about late summer, we're gonna talk about early fall, classic fall, and then late fall. And this is going to be a two-part series on musky transitional movements into the fall period. A lot of subscribers have questions about this stuff. So without further ado, let's dive in. So again, I'm going to talk goals here real quick. Goals, we're, I think I already went over these, but I'm just looking at my notes now, okay? Goals, we're going to discuss that musky movement. And two, I, I, well, I'm glad I'm looking at my notes. We're going to discuss the tactic and some the tactics and some of the lures that I use for catching fish at these various times of their movement and transition. So, okay, midsummer muskies, what are our water temperatures? I have deemed here water temps for mid-season 70 to 80 degrees and... Uh, I shouldn't have said 80 degrees, but I did. No, if you're curious to learn more about warm water and its effects on muskies, um, 
their, their physiology and, and how it affects them as a species, please listen to Jordan Weeks on Muskie 360. It's a fantastic podcast, but that's not what we're talking about right now, okay? Let's leave all of that, uh, you know, that, that, that hot topic, if you, no pun intended, we'll leave that for another vlog topic if you guys want to hear me discuss those terms. Uh, but, you know, midsummer muskies, right? Here's, here's my thoughts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of draw a, a, a lake here, okay? We're going to start to bring in John Seeger's muskies. And we'll, you know, let's actually call this, this will be kind of a, uh, a river system, okay? So here we've got another lake over here. We'll call this uh, Lake X, classically, and this will be Lake Y, okay? I'm going to kind of make that look a little nicer. We've got Lake X and Lake Y. Okay, this is a river system. Uh, we have current in this river system, and I'm going to say this is a uh, stained water flowage, but this doesn't have to be stained. I'm just going to make this stained. Um, we're going to have a reef here, and this reef in our in our uh, log here, this is going to have some, some grass on it. It's going to have some cabbage. It's going to have all kinds of stuff. And remember, right now we are talking uh, mid-season, okay? So let's just talk. Uh, right now we're mid-season, and this is 70 to 80 degrees, okay? And, you know, of course, what, uh, what lake isn't complete? What, what great musky lake? And not all of them have this, but we've got some some rock structure, okay, we've got a couple rock structures, okay. And let's just say hypothetically here as I've got, and you can thank Stephanie, my girlfriend, for these wonderful, uh, let's just say this is, oh, 40, oh, that's not a very good marker there. Uh, let's say our, our depth here is just, just so we're, we're, we're clear here, let's just call it 40 feet, okay. And uh, let's say we've got a hole here at 40 feet, and and let's just say this is, oh, 20 in these. We'll make these 10s, and this will be, uh, oh, we'll make this 8. Something like that, okay? So where are our muskies hanging out mid-season? Well, that's a question a lot of you said, Jazz, I would have loved to have known this during the mid-season bite in June, July, and August. Well, here's where I think most of the muskies are, okay? I think most of them mid-season, <laughs> are toppled over each other. No, I'm just kidding. I think most of the muskies are probably suspended over open water. You've got occasional muskies that come into these reef systems, okay? You've got plenty of muskies. We'll just, you know, we've got weeds all the way around, okay? Weeds all the way around here. That's wonderful. Look at that. Beautiful. We got weeds in the neck down here. And, uh, you know, we, we've got, we've got, muskies that uh, are, I, I really should, you know, we've got current related muskies here. Whoa, Let's see if we can't put that guy up. We've got current related muskies, okay? We've got, I should, well, just for, just for what I'm trying to talk about here, this is a suspended fish here. Mid-season, most of our muskies, I don't want to give a percentage, but I think most of our muskies are holding over open water. And they've got everything they need over open water, okay? They've got, they've got bait fish. They can suspend at a depth with a temperature that is most comfortable to them. They are essentially free from a lot of the, uh, you know, shallow water skiers and fishers and, <laughs> I don't want to say fishermen, we call them anglers nowadays, okay? Because there's a lot of amazing uh, female musky hunters that are, that are listening here. Um, you guys absolutely rock. Um, but, you know, these muskies, I think they really suspend um, because they're following forage. A lot of the forage that, um, that I'm, I'm catching muskies around, or I should say, I should rephrase that. A lot of the times when I'm fishing muskies during the midsummer period, I am fishing reefs. I'm fishing rock reefs. I'm fishing weed reefs. And I'm fishing areas around. I, you know, just around these reefs. I'm fishing big areas around these reefs uh, that are holding bait fish. These could be various different types of bait fish. We don't need to go into that, but you need to be able to use your electronics and find these clouds of bait fish. But again, I really think you will see, if you, if you share a day in the boat with me during July, 
that I spend a lot of my time fishing reefs, whether that's rock or weed, okay? I'm spending tons of time out there. I think the majority of muskies are suspended. I think they will slip up into areas that are close to what we're gonna call the basin, okay? Just the mid-lake basin. The main lake basin, I should say. It doesn't need to be mid-lake. It could be anywhere within the lake. But again, I, I'm focusing on these, these reefs and, and structures, if you will, that are close to the basin during the mid-season. Mid and I think, again, you know, sometimes I'm trolling for these fish, but more often than not, I'm focus, focusing on reefs. And I really do think that the majority of our muskies suspend. I think I've said that probably 55 times, but also the biggest muskies suspend. And that's why the biggest muskies are so darn tough to catch. They're just tough to catch. These big muskies, they just sit out there and they feed occasionally and they rarely come in. As the great Tom Gelb once said in his book, Muskie Strategy, big muskies, and I'm talking truly big muskies, at least in my area of Northern Wisconsin, eat, live and die and reproduce in deep water and they never come shallow. They're just wired differently. And that's one of my topics here I wanted to talk about is introverts and extroverts. I think that some muskies are shallow water fish. They're just programmed to be in shallow water, just like I'm programmed to be more of an extrovert. It's just the way I'm wired. Some people would never want to do a vlog. They'd rather watch a vlog. Maybe they're, they're more introverted and that's cool. Some muskies are weed fish, some muskies are open water fish. And I think that some muskies can be pushed to become open water fish. Uh, but I think naturally a lot of muskies uh, will suspend. And um, okay, you know what I'm gonna say here again is, uh, what is unique to our mid season is that everything is peaked, okay? Our aquatic vegetation is peaked, our reefs, some reefs take a long time to grow vegetation. These reefs are absolutely packed with weeds. You know the lures I'm using this time of year, and really essentially you guys have seen uh, throughout the seasons of Muskie Mastery, the lures that I use at various times of the year. Uh, this year, I mean, come on. If you were throwing uh, a little 500 Great Flame Booker Tail Tinsel, at least in my waters, you're missing fish, man. So I throw blades over these rock reefs. I throw blades over these weed reefs. I throw blades over open water. I throw top water over open water. A lot of folks ask me, what's your favorite lure? I don't have a favorite. I have a lure perhaps that's producing. And you know, I'll tell you, you saw my post probably, uh, if you're following me on social media this season, Goldilocks, Goldilocks took over uh, late in the season, which is no surprise. But you know, uh, did Great Flames still catch fish in, in August and September? Yeah, but Goldilocks and Double Eight took over. So is, am I just gonna throw Great Flame all year long? Well, no, not if it's not producing muskies like something else, okay? So, so that's really mid-season, mid-summer. Mid and now I, I'm gonna try to discuss a little bit of, of late summer, okay? And you're gonna see some changes here, maybe not in the map so much, uh, just yet, but we're going to talk late summer muskies here, okay? And what I what I want to really talk about with regard to, and this is probably a little, little uh, wet there. Let's see, late summer, and this is going to be um, late summer. I'm going to say really is between 60, 67 to 60 degrees. Okay, I'm just going to move that over here until I until that uh, dries off there. So this is our, this is our uh, temperature range for late summer, okay? And some important things, and this is probably why you actually are watching this vlog, okay? Uh, <laughs> which is why I saved this until 14 minutes in. Uh, just kidding. But our late summer period, okay, 67 to 60 degrees is what I'm gonna call late summer. If you really wanna fact check me, check out Tony Rizzo's Secrets of a Musky Guide one or two, and you can actually see how close I am. But in my notes, that's what I decided to go with. The late summer period is really, really a cool period of time. And I'm, I'm actually going to accentuate this by doubling this. I mean, late summer, guys, whoo, do we have serious vegetation, serious vegetation. Serious, this extends, this is everywhere, okay? Late summer is typically, we'll say, um, mid-August up through 
mid September, maybe into you know into the September twentieth range. That's going to be sorry. Did I say mid summer? That's going to be what I consider our late summer period from mid mid August to middle of September. And our water temperatures have taken a significant drop. This is very um, important to realize and recognize that this is this is a transitional period, guys. We are losing day length. Okay, as we as we saw into to um, contrast in May and into June, our days were gradually getting longer. Our our sun was was rising earlier. Okay, and and setting later. Now at the tail end of our of our kind of summer into fall transition here into our our late summer period, our our day length is shrinking. And at this point, what you've seen here, and I've tried to to display this pretty drastically here. Um, it's really not an exaggeration. It is really not an exaggeration. Aquatic vegetation has absolutely peaked at this time of year. And something, and I'm gonna try to make this pretty drastic, okay, if I can, okay? Here, here's what I think happens, okay? Midsummer, okay? Our vegetation peaks. Let me get these without, there we go. I mean, I'll, find a, I'll find a good way to get these guys without hurting them. Um, our summer, our, our midsummer bite here again. Let me get back on track as I was uh, trying to get Fred the musky there. Vegetation has peaked. Water temps are starting to drop. The day is shrinking, and the evening temperatures are cooling. This is a time of great change, and some for some reason, this photo period uh, changing. Okay, which is again length of day and daylight. Um, this triggers muskies that I think have suspended during the mid-season. They've been out here, you know, because of boat traffic and because of the forage that they're chasing and whatever you want to uh, um, equate it to. But they're out here and what happens is this, okay? This is, and I'm not saying all of them do this, but all of the sudden you start to see muskies piling up on and again, we could do this on a variety of things. We'll do this, we'll do one on the rocks, and really to make this fair, we're gonna put them in the weeds, okay? And what I'm getting at here is this. What I see, in, and we're kind of on the tail end of this here in Northern Wisconsin, in our late summer period, is we have a serious push to that shallow water bite, okay? And, you know, again, for whatever reason it is, we've, and well, actually I'll go into a couple reasons, but we've got a serious push to the shallow water. Big muskies that have suspended move in. They become very, very targetable, very, very in trouble for us casters, for us guys and gals that like to cast. And again, you do know that I, I do like to do my fair share of trolling. But again, if you're a caster and that's primarily what you do, boy, you better get at it in the late summer period. And I think one of the reasons for this push is that because this aquatic vegetation is so immensely built up, I think what happens is this, this is my theory, is that mid-season we have bait, okay? We have bait clouds. And the bait is suspended over these open water and these deep water basin areas in proximity to reefs. And this bait, whoop, whoop, it starts to sneak back because of the cooler temperatures. I think, I think cooling temperatures uh, adds something to it. I think that you've also got a high level of oxygenated water. Even though this is starting to kind of die off, these weeds to some degree are so peaked that some of it's starting to die off with the shortening of the days. But generally speaking, I think you've got a, a pull of these, this, uh, you know, these, these eutrophic areas. It pulls fish in, bait fish, and it pulls muskies with it. It also, just from a hiding perspective, muskies uh, will, be, will be, again, chasing the bait as it goes in here to hide. And so again, I think there's a transition in the late summer period for muskies to move shallow. This is one of the most, and I'm telling you, this is one of the most exciting times of the year to be fishing. The top water bite is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Top rater fishing from mid-August to mid-September is second to none. It is just insane. And, uh, you know, I would say 
Lure-wise, what you're going to see with me from midsummer to late summer, midsummer I'm still throwing a lot of the 500 series Booker tail. When you hit that late summer period, and again, all of my biggest Wisconsin muskies have come in late August to early September. Gadorzy, as many of you know, is uh, my longest and, and largest uh, weight-wise as well. Wisconsin fish was uh, September 24th, 2017. This falls in what I call my late summer period, okay? And that was on a 700 series buca tail. So I've got a transition, um, I guess I'll just say this, from midsummer, I'm still throwing a lot of, I mean, this is again an exaggeration, midsummer I go from 500, and now, you know, we go to the late summer period, and throwing 700s, twin 800s, uh, 10s, uh, your, your mag shallies, you know, whatever you want to, I mean, but again, there is a transition in size of my presentation at this time of year, okay? I'm going bigger. And I think that, ha I think there's a, a naturalness to that and that your entire forage base, you look at the forage that muskies are feeding on, and I'm going to, I'm going to slowly start erasing some of this so it dries for me. But you look at the forage, right? The forage grows. Like the muskies are growing and so is the forage. The forage is growing as well. Let's see if I can kind of take our, our muskies here and start transitioning them, no pun intended. But again, the forage is growing and I think you'll find that muskies are going to start feeding on larger prey items. Now, I don't think that's necessarily always the case. And I've got folks that... Um, Tell me, like, oh, you know, are you saying that I can still fish the JB Rattler in the fall? Well, yeah, of course you can. It's going to work fantastic in the fall. But on average, I'm throwing bigger lures. Okay, now, very early time, uh, very, sorry, unique time of the season, okay? And we're still focusing on our Lake X here for the most part, okay? Here's uh, me and Richardson or Conti or Big Whiskey fishing there. And the old ranger. Thanks again, John Seegers. So we kind of have talked a little bit about late summer and now we're going to talk early fall. And that's actually what's taking place right now in my home waters, on my home waters in northern Wisconsin is early fall. Okay, early fall, and I think this is going to be um, dry here, I hope. Early fall, let's see. Good. Early fall period. And I'm going to say water temps here. What did I say here? I said 59 to 50, whoops, 57 degrees. And I think what you're going to hear me say here, you knew this was coming. This is when the dreaded turnover takes place, okay? Fall turnover starts to happen in our early fall period. That transition from your 60s into your 50s and... When is turnover, and, and not all lakes turn over, a lot of lakes roll over. This, this really depends upon the depth that you have in your lakes. Um, the clarity can play a factor into this. Does the water stratify or not? Um, we, you know, there's a lot that goes into stratification and things like that. That can be a whole other vlog. You can leave that in the comments section. But back to the point here, our early fall period is a time of drastic change. You will start to have major, major, Weed die-offs. I'm just going to delete all of this right now, okay? And I'm not saying this is all gone, but I'm going to say that uh, instead of having, you know, four or five muskies up here, you're not going to have that many, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to start to, I'm going to start to get rid of this stuff. So the reason I'm deleting the weeds here, guys, is because as our daylight, you know, becomes shorter and shorter and shorter, photo photosynthesis, you have to remember, uh, you know, plants are, are uh, we, we call these primary producers. Those of you who are interested in, in biology or, or remember a thing or two about biology, some of you may be um, science teachers yourselves or professors at universities, okay? I'm just going to make this pretty drastic here, okay? And um, again, there we go. So again, you know, as that daylight shifts and, and, and becomes less and less, the plants themselves... Uh, they, they, they stop growing and they actually begin to die off. Now, do all weeds die? No, there are some and plenty of weeds that are long lived, uh, but without getting into the specifics of these species, because we don't have time for that right now, 
Just know that a lot of weeds on these reefs, okay, die off, okay? And there, there may be some here on, on this reef here. There might be a little bit there, but for the most part, what you're seeing is it's, it's a time of chaos, a time of upheaval, tra you know, uh, turnover when we have these mixing of different uh, layers and temperatures of water. You know, a lot of folks have asked, is there a pattern? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember going to a famous, uh, or I, I remember going to a seminar by our, one of our, our most famous uh, uh, musky uh, anglers and guides, Steve Herbick, uh, used to own Andy Meyers Lodge, still guides up in Canada. And, uh, you know, Steve said, look, you know, all I do is fish and I fish more and then I fish again and I fish a little bit more. And I just keep going until one of these son of a guns, I don't think he said it that politely, one of these son of a guns cracks whatever I'm throwing. And I think there's a little bit to that sometimes in your early fall period is, um, you know, just being on the water a lot and figuring out a pattern. Is there something to be said for finding green weed growth during this time period? Oh, yeah. I think you're going to have muskies during this time of the year um, honing in on areas that are still really good. And I'm going to, I'm going to just accentuate that by, by putting these muskies uh, close to my current area, my neck down area. I'll talk about that, okay? But uh, and we'll, have, we'll still have some muskies on the rocks. Always have some muskies on the rocks. But, you know, my, my early fall, you know, idea here is that as the weeds die off, a common question is where do they go? Do some fish go out and suspend? Absolutely. I think you will find some fish hanging on to some of these, these areas that are holding on, if you will, but they aren't gonna stay there forever because again, there's nothing to really hold the bait outside of wind current. Wind current, and so I guess I'm saying, will muskies hold on, on a structure that once had a lot of weeds on it, now it doesn't? Yeah. Does, does it hold muskies with the consistency that it once did? No, it does not, okay? so. That's something to understand is that why, why not? Well, because the bait fish that held in those weeds are no longer there. Without the weed cover, bait fish aren't very fast, so they need that weed cover and they will disperse. So you will find muskies dispersing and honing in on areas that still have good green weed growth present. One trick that I have found over the years, and that's why I drew my, my, my flowage here, my, my uh, body of water with current, is that I really, and this is my big point here that I want to talk about with, with early fall, is that I really focus in on areas, uh, neck down areas, okay? Areas with current, okay? You can't always see this current, but know that it's likely there if you've got a, a uh, reservoir or a flowage that's dammed and they're opening that dam on, on some sort of uh, periodic basis, okay? Um, you're gonna have water flow here and you're gonna have muskies here. Why would you have muskies there? Oxygenated water, bait fish movement. Uh, muskies will always naturally respond to current. So when you have current, these are places to go. And again, when you've got turnover going on and you've got a lot of chaotic situations happening within the habitat and the communities and the populations of fish, go to areas of, you know, where, where you think you have the highest percentage of finding them. And to me, a lot of times in that early fall transition area, that is, um, neck downs and that weed growth that's still that's still green. I will spend a decent amount of time, I'm gonna move our muskie here, uh, you know, fishing rock structures at this time of year because again, I think that fish tend to leave these areas where the weeds are dying off and they tend to, you know, focus in on areas that have more hard bottom structure that's not gonna deteriorate. So that's a change that I see during this time. Um, you know, again, and your, your live bait really becomes a factor this time of year. Okay, not only am I throwing big stuff, and again, uh, this is a, you know, something that Stephen Paul and I have discussed a lot on the Muskie 360 podcast, and I'm kind of talking about two things here, um, getting two birds with one scone. That's the uh, environmentally friendly way or the uh, PETA friendly way to say that nowadays. Um, but, you know, cold water, you know, you, you got to start to realize this, okay? Slow, okay? As your water temperature is cool, you need to think about this seriously. You are not, well, you should, I shouldn't say you're not. You, you may want to consider uh, changing the cadence of your retrieves. Burning your lures in during this time period and as you move into the fall and beyond 
may not be your best uh, plan of attack. Cooler water calls for slow, okay? And also larger presentations, uh, a lot of times things that you can pause or slow roll. Um, and again, live, that's why live bait, one of the reasons, I said one of the reasons live bait is so effective is because you can work it so slowly. Think about that. Live bait, you can literally slowly drift your, and control your drift around and over a spot and you're gonna catch fish because it's one, it's real, and two, please use quick strike rigs, and, and whatever I was gonna say, three, it's slow. And that's one of the biggest reasons I think live bait catches fish is because uh, not only is it real, but it's moving slow, okay? So now we're gonna just move into, and we're gonna kind of wrap things up with this idea here, okay? Our, what I'm gonna call our classic fall period. And I'm just gonna give you some ideas here. Where are muskies moving? And I'm, I'm actually gonna just redo the entire uh, board here. And again, John Seegers, guys, what, a, what, a, what an amazing, you guys are all amazing, but John Seegers with the, with the muskies, this is so cool. So uh, I'm gonna have to probably give this a second to dry off, but um, just to give a nice clean slate here on our, I feel like um, <laughs> the late Bob Ross, you know, a pretty little mistake here, pretty little rock pile here, pretty little cloud here. Yep. Loved watching Bob Ross. Good stuff. I am not affiliated with Bob Ross, so if anybody has political views with Bob Ross, I have no idea what exists out there, but please don't group me in with that. Don't do it. Okay, see if this, see if this dries. Okay, so we are now going to discuss, and we will probably end today with this. Classic fall bite. Yeah, how about some jaws of a muskie? Okay, classic fall bite. Water temperatures, what did I say here? 56, dropping down into 42 degree range, okay? And what is going on during this time, okay? We've got our, we our reef here, we had and again, there's no weed growth there anymore, okay? Remember we had our, our rock reefs? Okay, where are the muskies now? And actually what I'll do, let me see if I've got, yeah, we got a, we got a red mark here, let's see if this works. Um, what I'm gonna do here is first draw in, and this is just, again, this is, let's call this um, 10. We're gonna do this just for one side of the lake. And we're gonna call this right here. We're gonna call this pretty little line uh, 12. And we're gonna call this line here 15. And then we're gonna call this 20. And we'll call, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get rid of you and you, okay? Because I want to make, I want to prove a point here with my late fall stuff, okay? We're going to get rid of that, and we're going to do something like this. We're going to call that 35. And I see I'm staying true to our map here. That's 40, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, one thing that I really focus on during the late fall period, of many, do I focus on weeds? You're going to say, is the weed bite still a thing, Chaz? You know, <laughs> is the weed bite still a thing? There's still muskies hanging the weeds. Yes, there are, okay? If, there, if you still have green weed growth, yes, okay, we will put one of our muskies hanging here in the weeds. Please don't let that uh, voice or impression offend you. It was of no one, don't worry. Uh, yeah, you'll still have muskies in the weeds even when the water temperatures are cold. So if you've got good weed growth, even if some of it's dead and decaying, will it hold fish? Yes, but, but what do I focus on during this time is this sweet zone right here. Okay, and we call this area here. Again, I'm just calling, this is, this is different on all different types of lakes, okay? You have to know that. This, okay, we're calling this a break line. This is the break line. And it is where the shallows break into the deep the basin, okay? This is a, a, a very uh, important thing to, to understand, okay? That, and, this, and this is something that I just wanna talk about here 
uh, a little bit, and then we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap things up. Muskies and musky movement late into the season. You know, you have to you have to think about this from a perspective of you know this this is a this is a transition. Okay, this is bigger this is bigger than just fall. Okay, this is a transition into wintering. Muskies are preparing to spend the winter covered by three feet of ice in darkness, in brutal cold, even though they're cold-blooded creatures, okay? And what they start to do, I mean, I, and I, this is my theory, so again, fisheries biologists, I'd love to see the data, and I'm not arguing differently, but this is just what I found. Muskies winter here in the basin. Muskies winter close to the basin. So in that classic fall period, I'm not going to call it late fall, but in the classical fall period, I focus on sections of my, you know, lakes that have the deep water. I want to be fishing in the deepest water systems. So am I going to focus on the really shallow water lakes on a, on a body of water? Probably not. Okay, at this time of year, I'm going to focus on the areas and the lakes that have the deep water, okay? And one thing sticks out to me this time of year is that muskies really like to hold, okay? Actually, you know what? Hey, it's time to bust these guys out, okay? We'll have some, we'll have some muskies uh, in the basin, okay? But uh, we're going to have a, top, a couple top-down muskies here. We've got muskies that are holding on the break line or close to that break line. Look at all these wonderful muskies, okay? And, you know, why do muskies hold on a break line during this time of year? Uh, I think very simply this, you know, first of all, the weed structure that was available is no longer available. That's kind of come and gone at this point in the year. A lot of it has died off. And I think when you look at, you know, muskies are creatures of edges, just like all of these predators are. And this is an edge. We go from shallow and then we just drop. It's an edge. It's an ambush point, guys. That's why muskies, in my opinion, like breaks, okay? And it's also where their forage is. It also has a lot to do with forage. Is there uh, a, a week or a time, uh, a time in that classic fall period where the muskies are up in the shallows here? Yeah, there is. How would you know that? Got to use your electronics. Got to go look for the food source. You got to do a little investigating. Otherwise, who, how would you know? Or you got to catch fish doing it and then investigate. It's all about scientific investigation, okay? But how do you catch fish? And this is, I was going to try to draw this. You've got fish cribs. You've got fish cribs on the break, okay? I really, in that classic fall season, focus a lot on fish cribs, rocks, hard bottom structures, and break lines. I'm a huge fan of break lines. And uh, again, now, before, before I come out with uh, part two of this whole series, if you want, I believe it, it's definitely still on the Musky 360 podcast, please go and check out the very first podcast that we ever recorded for Musky 360. Stephen Paul and I go into big time detail on the late fall season and trolling, okay? Um, and I talk a lot, about, about, a, lot of, a lot about the next phase in this whole thing, which I call the late fall period and how I catch fish doing that. But again, you know, this is where I, I better use this. This is where I am trolling break lines. I am casting break lines, okay? I am running suckers on break lines. I am running suckers around rock reefs and things that are close to the deep water basin. Again, I hope this vlog sheds a little bit of light onto um, ideas for you guys, wherever you might be fishing, um, for your fall, you know, your fall activities. And that's, that's kind of just a, a few ideas of mine when it comes to midsummer to late summer and then into our early fall and our classic fall season. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a beautiful thing to watch and, and track a species um, over the course of a season and to see um, in, in the ways that they change their, their, their habits over the course of the season. I really think if we looked at it, it is, is really um, very largely based around their, you know, just chasing of forage. It all has to do with their food source. 
If you want to catch more muskies, you've got to be able to use your electronics effectively, or you just got to know where their food is and you will find the muskies. So guys, that's it. I'll keep, I'll keep it as a, as a wrap there, probably a 40 minute uh, vlog, but hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope that, uh, that this was a topic of interest as we enter this time of year. And um, if you like this, we'll do more vlogs like this. It's kind of my makeshift vlog studio for now. I'm gonna probably decorate it more. We'll see how it turns out. But um, with that said, guys, again, I can't thank you enough. I, I really can't thank you guys enough. You guys have meant the world to me. You, you always will. And this, is a, this has just been a fun ride that we're on together with this, uh, this YouTube channel. And we'll see how, it, see how it goes in the future. I'm really excited about uh, some, some exciting stuff for season four coming up. I've got a lot of content. We, we filmed, a, filmed a lot of stuff and I've got some surprises coming your way, some changes for season four that I hope you'll enjoy. With that said, guys, as always, thanks for watching.